Assalamualaikum and good morning everyone so today we are going to discuss on analytical techniques okay so for STPM uh, level the two types of analytical techniques that you that we are going to discuss is on agarose gel electrophoresis and paper chromatography okay so analytical technique Right, it's a method that is used to determine the concentration of a chemical element or chemical compound. Okay, that is analytical technique techniques. Now, so let's focus on the first one, paper chromatography. All right, basically this is how a uh, chromatography, okay, is being assembled. Okay, and this paper chromatography here, okay, is known as the chromatogram. Where you have the pigments that is already separated here okay so this paper chromatography here or chromatography here is known as the chromatogram okay so paper chromatography is a technique used to separate mixtures of chemicals of similar nature okay by allowing this um, chemicals common solvent to flow over them right in a porous solid medium such as paper so the mixtures will separate into bands of pure substances so maksudnya right you have kamu ada apa ni uh, satu chemical ni okay campuran chemical mixture of chemicals example is like photosynthetic pigments you know photosynthetic pigments ada chlorophyll A chlorophyll B ada carotenes okay so you have this one mixtures of this photosynthetic pigments now you want this photosynthetic pigments to be separated okay kamu tidak mau ada campuran chlorophyll A chlorophyll B tidak mau mau dia separated so kita guna paper chromatography and then yang photosynthetic pigments ni mixtures of photosynthetic pigments ni right okay um, letakkan di satu bahagian okay di paper chromatography ni and then biar solvent ni Okay, so over ni dia pass by uh, photosynthetic pigments, so. right? So bila solvent ni dia pass by photosynthetic pigments ni, photosynthetic pigment ni akan separated. Okay, dan dia ik akan ikut pergerakan solvent ni naik ke atas paper chromatography ni. Dan bila kamu serapat uh, apa ni uh, photosynthetic pigment yang telah separated ni. Okay, ini dipanggil again like what I mentioned earlier, chromatogram, right? A chromatogram. So now, normally this common solvent is a non-polar mobile force. Sorry, non-polar mobile phase. Okay, it's a non-polar mobile phase. Non-polar sebab solvent ini mesti solvent yang non-polar right non polar right example is acetone okay and then yang common solvent ini dipanggil mobile phase sebab as you what you can see in this diagram here right the solvent will move up all right will move upwards in the chromatography paper right in the paper sorry chromatography paper so since this um, solvent is uh, mobile so the solvent is known as the mobile phase mobile means boleh bergerak right ini dipanggil chromatography paper dan teknik ini dipanggil paper chromatography don't confuse all right students chromatography paper and paper chromatography paper chromatography refer to the name of this technique and chromatography paper refers to this paper and once this paper Okay, that has the pigments already separated on it. This paper is known as chromatogram. Okay, yang kertas ini dipanggil sebagai stationary phase because this paper it doesn't move. Okay, it's static. Okay, and this stationary phase, right? Normally or usually, right, is a porous solid medium okay and has the polar characteristic okay so yang ini mesti polar yang ini pula mesti non polar 
देखें Now, paper chromatography able to efficiently separate small molecules such as photosynthetic pigments, amino acids, and nucleotides. Now, the principle of this paper chromatography, right? First things first, small concentrated amount of pigment is applied on the starting line. Okay, you can see this chlorophyll spot here. This is where the small concentrated amount of pigment is being applied, right? And this is the starting line. Then the paper is hung on a solvent such as petroleum ether, right? So this is the petroleum ether, and then the solvent soaks into the paper by capillary action, okay? Because of the fibrous or porous nature of the paper, capillary action means solvent ini dia akan bergerak naik ke atas, meresap, okay? Kadar Cara dia resapan tu dipanggil sebagai capillary action, okay? And this is because of the porous nature of the paper, the chromatography paper. Next, the aqueous component of the solvent, right? The aqueous component of the solvent will bind to the cellulose of the paper and forms a stationary gel-like phase with it. Okay, the organic component of the solvent continues migrating. Together with the solid molecules, thus forming the mobile phase and separate the solid molecules. Okay, now that is the principle of the um, paper chromatography. Now, the pigments, right? They are able to be separated because of these three factors. Okay, so the first one is the affinity. Or solubilities of the solvent, right? Affinity or solubilities of the solvent. So I mean to say, higher affinity pigments, right? Sorry, higher affinity pigment towards the solvent. Okay, or more soluble pigments in the solvent will move faster. Okay, so I mean to say, mana pigment yang bergerak lebih laju menuju ke arah atas chromatography paper tu? Okay, meaning to say that particular pigment is, it has higher affinity. Okay, higher affinity towards the solvent. Higher affinity means uh, pigment tu suka solvent tu. So solvent tu bila dia bergerak naik atas paper chromato, uh, chromatography paper tu. Okay, bila solvent bergerak ke atas chromatography paper tu, itu apa ni? Uh, pigments pun ikut sama-sama. Sebab the pigment has high affinity or higher affinity towards the solvent right ataupun more soluble pigments in the solvent you need to say pigment yang uh, more soluble in that particular solvent will move faster okay can you picture that right bila solvent ni naik atas chromatography paper ni kalau pigment ni dia has high affinity for the solvent it will follow the solvent move upwards in the chromatography paper Alright, so from there, any non-polar molecules will move faster than polar molecules. Remember, the solvent is a non-polar mobile phase. So, mana molecules yang non-polar, dia akan bergerak lebih cepat compare yang polar molecules. So, kertas tu, okay, chromatography paper, it is a stationary Uh, it's a polar stationary phase so it will attract polar molecules so any polar molecules will move slower compared with non-polar molecules right and then the second factor is the molecular size smaller pigments move faster right so larger pigments will move slower and then charges pigments with similar charge of the solvent will move faster okay so apparently this is the um, methods okay how to do the paper chromatography right and the outcome of this paper chromatography is this chromatogram right so I'm not going to elaborate on this because um, students are going to do this in the lab 
right? And when you do this hands-on, right, of this paper chromatography, you will understand better, right? Rather than trying to memorize these uh, methods, these steps. All right, now, what is the outcome, okay, of a chromatogram? From a chromatogram, this is a chromatogram, all right? Okay, this is the origin where this is the starting line, all right? Starting line where we have the concentrated pigments here. And then the solvent will move upwards in the uh, chromatography paper, right? And this is the solvent front, which is um, the line where the solvent, the solvent stops uh, moving upwards. Okay, which is by capillary action. Now, from a chromatogram, we can calculate the RF value. Okay, RF value also known as retardation factor value. Right. So, how do we calculate this retardation factor value? Easy. Distance moved by pigment divided by distance moved by solvent. For example, <clears throat> the RF RF value for B for compound B. Right. Is calculated by the distance moved by the pigment. You need to say the location of the pigment, all right, from the starting line divided by the distance moved by the solvent. You need to say from the starting line all the way until the solvent front. So x divided by z, right? So this is the RF of compound compound B. What about the RF value of compound A? Simple, Y divided by Z, right? Senangan. Okay, so basically, the ones that you are going to do in the experiment in the lab, right, is the uh, paper chromatography of photosynthetic pigments. And basically, this is the outcome that you will be expecting from your chroma program, right? And this is the respective RF value. Chlorophyll B, we have 0 0.45 roughly, all right? Chlorophyll A, 0 0.65, centophyll 0 0.71, and carotene 0 0.95. But usually you get this one, all right? The value is one, 1.00, usually in the lab. Okay. Now, <clears throat> these are the other uh, RF value for the other uh, pigments that can be found in uh, photosynthetic pigments. Okay, phytophytin. Okay, they are grey in color. Okay, and with 0 0.83 RF value, xanthophyll yellow, 0 0.71 RF value. Okay, so candidates class, you must remember. Okay, the color of chlorophyll B is green. Whereas chlorophyll A is blue green, right? Centophyll yellow, thiophytin gray, and carotene is yellow orange. Okay, this so basically this is an actual chromatogram from your experiment. What you will be expecting to see, right? It's very difficult to see the thiophytin. Okay. Okay, class. So now this is a table, right, that shows you the RF value of pigments. Okay, that is found in the photosynthetic pigments. Sorry, these are the RF value, right, of photosynthetic pigments that found in the chlorophyll, right. So now we have carotene, phytophytin, centophyll, chlorophyll A, and chlorophyll B. So if you look here, can okay, you notice that the RF value for carotene is the biggest, right? compared with um, chlorophyll B, which is the smallest. So what does this tell you? Now, this RF value here, it tells you that this carotene, right, is a non-polar molecule. You recall that the solvent that we use is a non-polar solvent. So this carotene, it has a higher affinity towards the solvent compared with chlorophyll B. That's why carotene, pigment, carotene, carotene pigment, can move faster because it follows the solvent as the solvent moves upwards in the paper um, chromatography sorry the chromatography paper right as the solvent moves upwards the carotene also follows right now having large 
RF value means this carotene all right, has higher affinity towards the solvent. Carotene molecule is smaller compared with chlorophyll B. Okay, and then um, carotene, okay, carotene um, move further, right, further up compared with chlorophyll B. Chlorophyll B size dia sangat besar, so it can't move further, and then it will, uh, it moves slow. That's why it can be seen at the bottom of the paper chromatography, right? If you refer to this diagram here, this is where chlorophyll B is. Okay, it can't move fast. It moves slow. That's why it is shown uh, here. The location of the chlorophyll B, chlorophyll B is shown here, compared with carotene. This way, carotene can be found. Why? Because carotene uh, moves further and faster. That's why here is where carotene is found. So since this is where the carotene is found, okay, carotene has a bigger RF value compared with chlorophyll B. Right? So calculate the flowing RF value for each of the pigment. Okay, so you calculate the RF value for each of this pigment, right? Where the RF value is given to you by, like what I mentioned earlier, distance traveled by the pigment divided by uh, the solvent, uh, the distance of the solvent. Right, so what is the relationship between the RF value with the affinity of the pigments towards the solvent? Like what I mentioned earlier, bigger, right? From your calculation, you notice that carotene will have uh, carotene has um, bigger RF value, right? So bigger RF value means higher affinity of the pigment towards the solvent because as the solvent uh, goes up the paper, the chromatography paper, the pigments follows. Right, it follows because it likes the solvent. Right, the pigment follows the um, movement of the solvent because the pigment has higher affinity for that solvent compared with the other pigments. Right, if you recall, this chromatography paper is a polar, right, polar uh, materials. So, any um pigments that is polar right will remain at the bottom it can't travel further there is one second larger molecules remains at the bottom okay it can't travel far or further okay so the bigger the rf value of oh, sorry the bigger the rf value the higher the affinity of the pigments right towards the towards the solvent Right, so pigments move faster and further. Okay. Right now, next is agarose gel electrophoresis. Okay, agarose gel electrophoresis. So this is a method that separates micromolecules, micromolecules such as protein or nucleic acids in an electric field. So meaning, say we have an electric field here. From that electric field. Right, these micromolecules can be separated. Right, so migration of the charged particles under the influence of an electric field. Okay, there is another definition for this agarose gel electrophoresis. It is the migration of charged particles under the influence of an electric field. So, I mean to say, again, like what I've explained earlier, we have an electric field here, and this electric field will um separates right the charged particles which is a micromolecule right into either in the cathode or anode of that electric field so agarose or polyacrylamide gel layer is usually used as a medium right in this agarose gel electrophoresis because this gel right Okay, has pores of molecular dimension sizes that can be specified. Okay, this gel they have sizes that we can uh, determine. Okay, predetermine. So, the molecular separation right in this gel electrophoresis or against gel electrophoresis is based on the gel filtration. 
okay and the electrophoretic mobilities of the molecules being separated so the gels in this gel electrophoresis will retard right or stop large molecules relative to the smaller ones so this is the place where we um, insert our uh, macromolecules all right so larger molecules will tend to stay in the cathode region all right as well as the um, bigger molecules the smaller ones right will move navigates through the agarose gel towards the ethods okay sorry towards the anodes okay towards the anodes so negative charge and smaller dna fragments move further towards the anode right okay negative charge and smaller dna fragments right so it's either um, negative charge with smaller DNA fragments or negative charge with um, smaller uh, molecules. All right, we move further towards the anodes. Why we mention um, smaller DNA fragments here? Because usually, right, this gel, agarose like gel electrophoresis is being applied in DNA fingerprinting. All right, DNA fingerprinting is a method where fragments of the DNA is being amplified. Okay, you will learn that in detail in the third semester later. So you will come across this gel electrophoresis again in the third semester. Alright, now the gist here is that negative charges and smaller uh, molecule will move towards the anode. Alright, heavier or bigger as well as positive charge molecule tend to stay in the cathode. Alright, so apparently this is what you will get at the end of the uh, process of this agarose gel electrophoresis okay so this is apparently the well where you insert okay your um, mixtures okay and then when the electric field is activated larger uh, fragments stays here okay or the positive charges charged uh, fragments while the sh shorter or smaller fragments as well as the negative ones are um, travel towards the anodes so you have this separation of the macromolecules now another type of electrophoresis is paper electrophoresis okay where you have two buffers here and they are being connected with a paper as a bridge okay so the sample is applied to a point on the buffer motion paper you can see this is where the sample is being applied okay so the ends of the paper are dipped into reservoirs of buffer in which the electrodes are immersed immersed right and an electric field is applied so the result is displayed on paper electro for gram right so this is a n so this is a paper electro for gram right positive ions or cations will migrate towards the cathodes right while the negative ions or n ions will migrate towards the anode obviously right positive charges attracted to the negative terminal right while negative charges are attracted to the positive terminal okay you can see in this um, paper electrophoretogram the negative ions or n ions are attracted towards the anode while the positive ions or cations are attracted towards the um, cathode terminal okay uncharged molecules however they will remain at the point of the sample application right imagine this is the point where the sample was being applied initially right after we turn on or activated or activates the electric field right pigments from the sample will be separated where the negative ions or negative charge pigments from the sample move towards the cathode and the positive uh, charge 
right uh, pigments will be uh, attracted towards the um, cathode or negative terminal right negative ions attracted towards the anode positive ions attracted towards the cathode the neutral or uncharged molecules remains at the sample at the point of sample application right so that's it for today's lesson